I remember that man so well. Him and Mark Parrish and Benny Goodman, all of them was always really good to me, especially Mr. Donahoe. He, we had a lot of falling out. As several times, we kind of got at odds with one another, but always made up. He was always there when I needed him. I knew when my uh, wife became pregnant. Uh, we went to the doctor and right about two weeks before the baby was supposed to be born, and and we found I was having twins. So I went and I told Mr. Dono, Mr. Dono, I said, we're going to have twins. He said, now, Beckley, don't come in line like that. I said, no, I'm not lying. I said, that's, uh, that's the truth. We're, we're going to have twins. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you have twins, I'll buy you another set of furniture to go with for the other baby. I said, that's a deal. So sure enough, when they was born, about two or three weeks after they was born, he come and picked us up. We went and picked out another set of furniture for the other one. So we had twin beds, two beds. We had them different colors because we kept one of them where we, keep them, where we could tell them apart more than anything. So Mr. Donahoe uh, lived up to his word. And we're working right along here on the trunk of this car. These old cars had what they call a rumble seat. Most kids these days wouldn't know what a rumble seat was to save their life. There was a seat back there where, where I'm working that let down, and there was a seat in there. It let back and folded back like a hood of a car. And there was a seat called a rumble seat. You sit down in that seat back there and, and ride. Why, you wouldn't even... Uh, you know, as politically correct as people are these days, you wouldn't even think about it. You don't even think about riding in an open pickup truck. And I know that was dangerous. I, I don't know of anybody that ever got killed uh, riding in a pickup truck like that. But I know many times we did it. We ride in, ride in the back of a truck Many times, as many children did that, seat belts, I mean, they didn't even come into existence until, I guess, in the mid-60s. When then they passed a law that everybody needs to start wearing them. And I've been around racing enough to know, yes, you need to wear a seat belt. Because, boy, I've seen some awful videos where people did not have their belt on. One little boy out on Dickerson Road one night, I'll never forget it as long as I lived. We heard, I was there visiting my brother Roy and heard a big, loud bang like a, like a, a cannon went off. So we went out and looked up the street there and there was, there was a truck sitting there and this little boy was riding in the back seat, no seat belt on, and he got catapulted through the windshield and out onto the highway. That right there convinced me, when you get in that car, you buckle that belt. No matter whether you think it's uncomfortable or not, it's a whole lot more comfortable than laying in the hospital bed or them putting you in a casket. So that's what I did. I, I, I convinced myself, and my children always wore those seat belts, even in the back seat. I say you don't have to, but I know that's, if you're going to wear one, the back seat is a place that you surely need one. Because when you come and hit that windshield, you're going, you're going as fast as that car is going. If somebody comes to a, 
an abrupt halt, you know. So convince people they need to buckle that thing up. Had it not been for seat belts and some of these race cars, of course, most of the drivers have been dead. Back in when Johnny Tony was running this car, they had seat belts and shoulder harness, you know, uh, aircraft grade uh, shoulder harness and seat belts, big old wide things in there that held them guys in place. Because even these little cars here, this one here's got a, a 327 Chevrolet engine in it when it be when it's complete. Now that little car probably don't weigh a thousand pounds, or maybe a little more. Well, you can imagine what a 325 horsepower motor would do. How fast it would carry that little body. And if you hit something, you didn't have a seat belt on. <laughs> you're in trouble. You're in terrible, terrible trouble. You know, if I, if I remember correctly now, and the more I looked at Ember's flame kiss stakes, I believe that that is still there in Printer's Abbey. I just remembered it being in Printer's Abbey. Fourth and Church. So if you go down Church Street toward Third, then Printer's Abbey is between Third and Fourth. On Church Street, I guess they, I guess they just kept the the Abbey as Church Street. Never thought about that. But that's where this place was. I remember when I played music, I played in a played in a, a club there uh, in Printer's Alley. And I believe I remember seeing it. And I believe I remember seeing it still there right today. Maybe somebody can enlighten me on that. You see old Joe standing over there. He's, uh, he's kind of pondering Looking at the the lettering, he he was he's all enthused. He they love this this little car. I don't blame them. It's a beautiful little car. You can see the original pictures of this car. It never did look quite as good as they got it looking right now. Cause you know he, he paints are a whole lot better these days, and you know the. Preparation is a whole lot easier. They can put a base coat, clear coat on that thing, and it'll sparkle. That's probably what they did. They based it up with yellow and came back with a clear coat over the top of it. Just a minute, I get this done. I'll be switching over to the other side and doing the Capital Chevrolet. And you'll notice I'll leave the tape back there because I do have white lines that goes below that flame kiss stakes and above it. There's a couple of small spots. A friend of mine, Noel Swarburn, he always used one of those mall sticks to, to letter with. I may just have to get back and try that. If, if anybody calls on me to do it again, I may, I may get me a mall stick and see if it'll help steady me a little bit because I get in such an awkward position because of my weight, because of my age. It makes it kind of hard to do. I'm just about to finish the word stakes now. And I believe I have to switch up the top there and letter the word home of. He's showing me what they made the grill out of. 
You can buy this wire mesh that almost looks exactly like the old Chevrolet grills and beautiful, beautiful grills. They got one sitting over there, the hood and everything's ready to go in the car. In these particular cars, they would let the hood up and the grill and all come up with the hood in later years, of course. They've changed the shape of the bodies and everything in later years. The only car I ever lettered for Bob Ruther, they they carried it to Daytona, I believe. I got pictures of, of the car that I lettered. I wish I had pictures of every car, of me lettering every single car. It would have been it would have been great for the for this day and time to be able to go back and look at those pictures of me lettering cars. I've got a picture of lettering Darrell Waltrip's first. I guess it was, it was either a Grand National car or a sportsman car. I've got pictures of me lettering that. And it's hanging on the wall of my, my business right now. A great big picture. Darrell has promised me time and time again that he would come down and autograph it. But that hadn't happened. I would I would love to have that done. I'd love to have him come down and autograph it. I, let, I wrote Stevie an email and asked her to send him down there, but that hadn't happened yet. Okay, I'm about to finish the word stakes now. And I'll jump up there and do that word home of. And then we move around to the other side, get the word Capital Chevrolet on, put Johnny Tony on on the roof, and put uh, the yellow jacket up on the front of it, up on above the above the windshield. Of course, there's not any windshield in this car. I don't know why they took the windshields out of any of them back then. Them guys running around the track out there with that wind blowing through that car. I don't know how they did it. I swear I don't. I remember Charles drove that either 55 Chevrolet and the 62 Chevrolet with open windshields. I mean, how in the world do you, do you do that? With that air hitting you in the face as fast as they was going around that, that big track especially. back now and checking things out and see if I got everything like it should be. I hope to goodness that this this audio works with the video. I've got the video running on. i got a special program that I'm trying it with here, and I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to work. I don't know whether my voice will hold out that long or not, but I'm sure hoping that this works out. That way, you won't have to listen to all that noise in the background of them fans running. I wish a thousand times that I would have told them to turn those fans off, but I didn't. Now let's do the word home, the words home of, before switching around to the other side. You'll notice here as I get ready to do this, these two words home of up there, you'll notice I'm going to use a, a round top letter. I know it's hard to see on the video, but I'm going to use a round top letter. Uh, round top and round edge letter, I call it, in order to, you know, save time. And uh, and it's like the original car was. We didn't always use squared off, blocked off lettering. In a lot of cases, we used uh, 
what I call the speed letters, one that kind of leans sideways and you just almost just a, a, a easy stroke, just real fast, you know. Now, as you see, I've done the, the H there. I'm going to do the O, and this, you'll notice that it won't take me too much, too long to do this because I'm actually, I'm actually just not taking that much time with it. We kind of watch, uh, watch the moves here now, and and I hope everyone that's been able to to, to see this would will uh, take to heart how much practice goes into this. I started this back when I was eight years old. I remember the letter in the first race car was Orville Hurd's car down at the down at the old bowl. He worked at a place called Taylor Brothers Garage right down to the end of the street where I lived. Uh, they were over on, I believe, on Grace Street, and I was, I was uh, lived on Hancock. I went down there, and I hung out quite a bit because I, I liked his little daughter. <laughs> we was uh, kind of girlfriend and boyfriend. Of course, and we're talking about somebody 12 years old. Which doesn't amount to much, you know, in a lot of cases. I would hang out around that garage down there. And one day, Mr. Taylor said, I, I'd already lettered Orville's race car. All I did was put a six on it, and I think I put his name up on the roof. Other than that, that's all I did to the car. You can probably look online, you'll see pictures of uh, that old car, number six. I was hanging around there quite a bit, and and Mr. Taylor knew that I was, you know, kind of into sign painting. So he asked me one day, do you think you can put signs on this building? And I said, well, I can sure try. So he went out there and dug out, I don't know how much car paint, old scraps and bits and pieces of car paint out in the, in the little storage area out back and gave me that paint. I painted the background out black. And if you can imagine trying to use car paint to paint anything with, especially with a brush, you're in trouble. So I did it. It took me about two or three weeks to finish it up. That's two sides of the building now. I painted both sides of that building. And if you go back and dig out, the, dig off the paints on there now, you'd find the Taylor Brothers Garage up under there and auto body work and uh, tune-ups and brake work and all that. And I did it all for about 30 or $40. I can't remember how much it was, but I really had trouble getting getting money out of him even at that. But old Wolver heard, he stepped in and he said, you're going to pay that boy. You're going to pay him, you're going to pay him right now. And he did. He, he went in he come back out the front door there and had, had some money in his hand. and So I, I thanked him for, for getting my money for it. I'm getting ready now, as you can see, to turn around and do the other side of the car. I'm going to do the capital Chevrolet on the other side. I've already done part of it as this video flips over there. The, the word capital there was done with a, what I call a double stroke letter. I would do, you know, one stroke and then another to the right of it or left of it, whichever the case may be. But I'm, this bottom there, as you'll see, it's single stroke letter. I'm using about a number six quill here to, to achieve that. And then if I were still doing that capital up there, it would be like, two of those strokes side by side. As you can see, I've, it looks like I'm shaking, but I'm, I'm really not. I'm, as I lay my brush down against the car, I kind of more or less mash on it a little bit just to get the, the bristles to spread out to, where I, to the stroke I wanted it. And as you, when you do that, these old quills, they kind of they kind of hold their shape, and they'll, uh, they'll do a good job for you. If anybody's interested in doing a, some lettering, the best thing to do is go on down to, to the, uh, 
I don't forget what to call it. It's an art store down in, uh, down on Six and uh, Crutcher Street. And it's called Plaza Art. That's what it is. Plaza Arts, and they've got all on a pretty good assortment of quills and and uh, fill-in brushes, whatever you might need. Of course, you want to carry a whole lot of money when you go there to do that, and you go online and buy. Uh, what we call black handle brushes, uh, which is what I got in my hand now, they're a little bit cheaper on, online, and they'll ship them to you. They don't charge you to even ship them. Of course, they charge you pretty good for the brushes, so it doesn't make much difference about the, <laughs> about the shipping. Uh, and you need to get you some one-shot lettering enamel. Uh, I just get me one can of lettering enamel and one brush to begin with, you know, you know, I, I would say somewhere around a six or seven, number seven brush would probably be a good one to, to learn with. And as we go along, I'll actually do a sign to show people how to lay out a sign and make it balance up. Anytime you're doing anything, you, you always find your center and you work the lettering from each side. Uh, you lay it out the best you can. I, I don't mean lay out each letter. Good Lord, if you did that, it would take you forever. I've seen people do that where they lay out an actual letter, but I don't do that. I just kind of make a little single line, and then I'll take and build the letter around that single line. And if I've seen I'm going too far, I can back up a little bit and ease off on the width of the letter some. But as you can see, when I get through the word in Chevrolet there, it should, I believe it says Chevrolet Company. When I get to the end of that, it should balance up perfectly up underneath that word capital. Then down to the bottom there, we got uh, the address, which is, uh, which is, uh, I think it's 910 Broadway, uh, 15, 10, I can't remember what it was. But uh, I remember years ago when I worked for Cummins and Company for about a year, back in 1959, we, I worked with an old boy named Yak. That's all I ever knew him for. Uh, that's the only, way, only, way, only thing I ever knew him by was Yak. He and I went around and done what we call repaints. We go around to the old signs that had been painted, and we'd repaint those signs. They had a contract to kind of keep up the signs, you know. With uh, they charged them a monthly fee, and they get a repaint every one, every couple of years. They go out and repaint the signs. A lot of times, you had to take the glass, the neon, off of those signs. I broke a many, many piece of neon just trying to get it off. And a lot of times, I was going to be brave and do it without taking the neon off. And sure enough, my brush would get hung and <laughs> I'd break it, uh, sure as the world. Now I'm get, beginning to put the word company on here. If you look online, uh, I, I believe the pictures there of myself or Yak One standing up on the top of the Capitol Chevrolet sign. That old sign was about 60 foot tall, I thought, but it was way up in the air. It was up to the very top of the building was your top hanger. And you uh, had to be very careful up there because you was walking on that top hanger to go out and maybe what I call, we painted the cans on them a lot of times, where you painted the outside. Maybe the Maybe the rest of it was porcelain, you know. The, the can always had to be painted. So we would, we would paint the outside edge and, and clean it all up, and even go down through there and wash it. Uh, we had spray bottles that would spray on, uh, this chemical on, it takes all the gunk off of it. And when we got through, the old sign looked pretty good. But I, I'm going to try to put that online where people can see. I can't remember which one of it was was up on top of that sign, but the other one took a picture of him standing up on top of that sign. 
I kind of believe in a way it was yak, but I'm not sure. Anyway, here I am. I've got the Capital Chevrolet Company, CO. Now, I will show you a mistake right here. That, uh, maybe you won't make one if you happen to do it. As you notice, the C looks kind of small compared to the, the, the O. It may be the angle of that picture, I'm not sure, but uh, when I get through, I think I'll try to add to the top of that C a little bit to, to make it a little bit bigger. Now we're doing 1510 Broadway there, I believe, is what we're going to put on, because they're up there about 15th and broad. I'm having to get down on the floor there, which is not fun for me. I, I have a lot of trouble with my lower back, and it's it's just no fun to get <laughs> get down like that. You know, I may have, may make a boo boo right here and put 510. I'm not sure, but it was 1510. 1510 Broadway. I'll probably have to go, go back down there at some point and put a one in front of that that five because it is 1510 Broadway. Right, if the Tony family is listening to this video, watch this video, you'll see I made that boo-boo. But it's no big deal. We can always fix it. It's a long way down there to their farm, so I don't want to... Maybe it is 15, no, no, I was, I was about ready to say it, maybe it's 1501, but uh, 5101, but I know that's, that's not right. As you can see, I'm having a, a pretty good strain there, just trying to do those letters. I'm sitting in a strain, sitting there and trying to lean back enough to, to get a good look at the letter. It's kind of rough on me. You can see me shaking. I'm going to grab hold of the car to kind of hold myself up there to where I can get this thing done. I'll probably just give one of the boys a brush and <laughs> let them do that one. They're going to bring the car to the to the speedway at some point and they'll kind of have a little ceremony there maybe and uh, run the old car around the track a little bit because uh, these old cars they don't handle like the new ones these, these new cars got power steering and all that stuff on them and uh, these old cars right here you it takes all your power to steer them I remember when my brother was running that 55 Chevrolet he didn't have any power steering anything like that but I'll tell you one thing, he, I've seen him many times with his hands blistered after a long race, you know, and especially down in uh, Chattanooga one day, uh, he ran a race down there, and in fact, he won the race down there. And when he got home, he couldn't even drive that Saturday night because of his hands. His hands were blistered badly. And in a picture on the internet if you look there. I, one of these days I'm going to put every one of my pictures on the internet and, and let people just thumb through them looking. I got, you know, several thousand pictures. And his hands were so blistered that uh, he asked Jimmy Griggs to drive the car. So Jimmy Griggs went out and he, he was doing real good in the car. And Freddie Fryer spun out in front of him and Jimmy got into him and kind of messed up the old 55. You can see me just struggling there trying to get up. And boy, that's, uh, that's kind of a hard thing to do when you're 75. Any of you people out there listening, I would encourage you to make sure you took good care of your, your legs and, and your, your body. As you can see, I'm, I'm nobody, nobody to be trying to tell anybody how to lose weight, but uh, uh, I'm going <laughs> to, one of these days I'm going to try to do that. I've been scrubbing around out so much, now I've got stuff all over my pants there, just dirt all over my pants. 
Now we're getting ready to put Johnny's name on top of the car, which I has this video flips. I've uh, I've already done that, and now they've asked me to put uh, something up on the front of the car, something like a Super B, uh, uh, yellow jacket, uh, yellow jacket special. That's what we put up on the bare front, which you'll see me doing a little of that. He's asking me now, am I going to put